In this video, I want to present the source follower circuit. Let's say I'm designing an integrated circuit. And on that circuit, I have a rather large capacitor. Let's presume that it's five picofarads. Now that may not seem like a big capacitor, but on an integrated circuit, that can be significant. Now let's say that I have a circuit over here that wants to drive that five puff capacitor, but the circuit is rather tiny and it really can't drive this five puff capacitor in a, a lot of time. So I want to insert a circuit in between a source follower circuit. And this circuit has a input here and this output will go to the five picofarad capacitor. Now my circuit over here has to drive a very small input load of the source follower and the source follower does the work and drives my five picofarad capacitor. So let's consider the very simple two transistor circuit to make the source follower. Recall from a previous video on the CMOS current source that we had an N channel transistor with the gate connected at 1.5 volts. And here we have the output of the current source with the current I. And over to the right, we have a graph of the current in the current source versus the voltage at the current source output, V out. Now recall that we, get, we got this curve and at this point it became more or less a constant current source with some slope. And recall that this key voltage here is the voltage gate to source minus the threshold voltage is the voltage at which this channel, let me change colors, this channel in this transistor is just getting pinched off. The electric field at the drain side is just enough to be at the, at the transistor threshold and put us in this particular region. Now let's, before, let me undo some of these markings here. Okay, let's add another transistor to the circuit and form the source follower. So here we've added one more transistor that has the same dimensions as the one on the bottom. It has the same channel width and the same ch channel length. And here this transistor drain is connected to plus 5 volts. And let's presume that the input is set at 3 volts. Now we know that we have a certain current I flowing in this transistor at the bottom. And this exact same current flows in the upper transistor. And since these transistors have the same geometry, we would expect this voltage gate to source to be identical for the transistor on the top. So this gate to source voltage will also be 1.5 volts. So in this particular case, our output would be at 1.5 volts approximately. Now, I want to point out that there is actually a difference between these two transistors. They are not really identical. And the reason they're not is because we have a substrate connection and we have a source voltage. Now on the bottom transistor, the source voltage is at zero volts. And at the upper transistor, the source voltage is at 1.5 volts. And it turns out that that makes a difference. The difference is that this source is at a higher voltage than this substrate node, the node that connects to the surface of my wafer. 
where in the bottom transistor, the source is at the same voltage as the surface of the wafer or the substrate. So the fact that the upper transistor has its source at a higher voltage actually causes the threshold of this transistor at the top, we we'll call it VT, the, the threshold of this transistor will actually increase a little bit. And that will sometimes need to be taken into account. So let's do a simulation of the source follower circuit and, and look at the response. Here I've created the schematic for the source follower. M2 is the bottom transistor that connects to the output node and the source of this end channel transistor is at ground. And the gate goes to a constant 1.5 volt voltage source. And the upper transistor, its strain connects to this voltage source that's set at 5 volts. And the input of the source follower is connected to this V2 voltage source. And this voltage source provides a very slow input ramp. The ramp starts at time zero, at zero volts, and five seconds later, it ramps up to five volts. So in effect, this is providing the DC response of this circuit. And notice that the channel width and the channel length are the same for the top transistor and the bottom transistor where the width is 4 microns and the channel length is 1 micron. So let's do a simulation. Let's look at the input versus output response for this very, very slow changing input. I'm going to select my run. And let's probe some nodes. Let's probe the input node. And that's shown in green. So you see it starts out at 0 volts. And five seconds later, it goes up to five volts. So let's check our power supply node. And that's shown in blue, and indeed that's five volts. Now let's look at our output node. And that's shown in red. And let me, let me expand this particular waveform. And notice that the green is the input, and it's very linear. It's a straight line. And the output shown in red doesn't do much until the input gets to a threshold voltage or a little more. And at when the input gets to about 2.5 volts, the output is at a, almost 1.5 volts lower. So if we look at these three grid points, each each grid here is a half a volt. So if we look at this input here, the output is one and a half volts down. If we look at this part of the input, the output is one and a half volts down. Here the output is one and a half volts down, and so on. So in this region, the output re response tracks the input response very well. However, at lower input voltages, the bottom transistor is not operating in the good part of the current versus voltage curve until the input gets up near 2.5 volts or so. And then it gives very good response.